Hey YouTube, it's Jeremiah with Colors of Columbia. Uh, you may not be used to seeing my face because I'm typically behind the camera, but today I decided to try something new and start a vlog. So I wanted to talk to you today about the real reason I decided to move to Columbia. You may or may not know that for the past eight years I lived in New York City, uh, but in October of 2019 I decided to move here to Medellin and I've been here for exactly one year. Uh, so October 3rd, 2019 was the day I landed here in Colombia. As you can imagine, when I told most of my friends and family that I was planning to move here, a lot of them had one question. Why the hell are you moving to Colombia? And the truth is I had a few answers, a few reasons for my move. Uh, one, I was getting kind of tired of New York City. Uh, New York is very expensive. It's, it can be a very exhausting city. If you live there, you know what I'm talking about. And I felt like for me, it was just time to do something different. Um, also, I wasn't extremely thrilled with my career. I used to work in the insurance industry and I wasn't you know, crazy passionate about that. I took a vacation here to Columbia and I really loved it. And it just, when I was here, I just had this epiphany like, maybe I should live here. So my original plan in moving to Columbia was to come here and start a photography tourism company. Uh, photography has been a passion of mine for many years and the tourism industry in Columbia was uh, really booming in 2019. And of course it's different now, but um, at the time it seemed like a good idea, right? <laughs> so my plan was to move here to Columbia start a company doing tourism with photographers and live my best Columbia Oprah entrepreneur life. So uh, that was what I was telling my friends, the reason I moved here. So each time a friend of mine would hear the news that I was planning to move to Columbia, I would share with them the same reasons I just, I just shared with you. But the truth is there was this other thing that I wasn't really, I didn't really understand fully. And the best way I can describe it is it was this weird pulsing ball of emotion that was sitting in the pit of my stomach. And it was just urging me to move to Columbia. And I didn't really understand why I was feeling that way or, or what, that, what the cause of that was, but I definitely felt it really strongly. And I got to a certain point because over and over again, my, my friends would ask me, why are you moving? Why are you moving? Why are you moving? And I kept giving them the same answers, but I started getting frustrated with myself because on a certain level, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I'm moving to Colombia. I just I, it's, I just feel like it's something I need to do and I really can't fully explain it. I decided to go ahead, sell all of my stuff. I packed up everything, emptied out my apartment, um, gave a lot of things away and hopped on a plane and moved down here to Colombia. So when I arrived here in Colombia, right away, I felt like it was the right move. I started making friends, I started learning Spanish, I started exploring uh, different cities around the country, and everything just felt like it was right. I, I felt really happy here, and I mean, there were th certain things that were difficult. I mean, the, my biggest challenge so far has definitely been learning Spanish. That's been a very slow and long process, but um, on the whole, I was really feeling like, wow, everything's going smoothly. I'm really happy I'm here. I really feel like this was the right decision for me. And all of a sudden, you know, bam, <laughs> Ms. Rona shows up. Um, and so when, when Colombia first uh, started dealing with the coronavirus, it took a little longer to get to Colombia than it did um, in some other countries. So at first we're, I was thinking, oh, it's not gonna be so bad. Um, here in South America, because South America isn't quite as connected um, internationally as some other places. But eventually it did arrive here, and uh, towards the end of March, Colombia went on a mandatory quarantine lockdown, as many places did. At the start of the lockdown, I was very much thinking of the lockdown as, as you know, an opportunity. I, I kind of had that Oprah mindset <laughs> where it was like, oh, this is going to be some me time and I can, you know, focus on my business plan and I can uh, get centered and get ready for the year ahead. And it's just going to be because, you you know, we, at first it was supposed to be two weeks is what they originally announced. But 
We all know that was a lie at this point. The lie detector test determined. That's a lie. That was a lie. <laughs> and so in addition to doing planning, I also decided to start listening to some audiobooks. One of my favorite things about living here in Colombia are the views. And I was lucky to find an amazing apartment that I loved here in Medellin. And it had these incredible views of the city with this great balcony. So when the quarantine started, I decided, hey, why don't I just get some audiobooks? I can lay out on my balcony, enjoy the fantastic view of Medellin, maybe have an adult beverage or two, and just kind of chill out and relax for a bit. I had been hearing about this book called Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. And I was like, you know what, why don't I download this book and just try it out? So um, to be clear, Such a Fun Age is not any type of personal development book. It's just a novel. It's a story. And I wasn't sitting down to try to like, you know, do any type of serious, um, you know, emotional work or anything like that. I just was like, hey, let me chill out on my balcony and, and listen to a good story. But the thing is, once I started listening to the story in the very first chapter, that undescribable ball of emotion that was in the pit of my stomach just came back to me and started ringing through me. And I was like, <laughs> I felt this so strongly. And it's, it's so ironic because usually in the times when you're not really looking for inspiration or you're not trying to think about uh, things in a, in a deep way, it's, that's when uh, kind of out of the blue, you get hit with this like crazy insight or this, this crazy inspiration. And that's what happened with this, with this book. So in order for this to make sense, I have to, to explain a little bit about the story. Just so you know, I'm not going to give any spoilers or anything like that. Everything is just from the very first chapter. And it's really just the setup for the novel. So the story Such a Fun Age starts off with Amira. Amira is a 25-year-old black girl who lives in Philly. And right away, I actually went to college in Philly. And at one point in my life, I was a 25-year-old black boy who lived in Philly. So right away, I kind of felt like I had a connection to the story. So Amira is at this birthday party having a good time. And her phone rings and it's actually her boss and Amira is a babysitter for this wealthy white family in Philly and so the mom whose name is Alix she calls her and she's like hey I'm really sorry I know this is a Saturday night but we're having a bit of an emergency at the house and there's gonna be police here at the house and I really don't want my daughter to be here in the house when the police are here so if you if you're able to, would you come by and just take our daughter out just for a couple hours, kill some time while we get everything squared away at the house? So Amira is broke and she's like, you know, actually I don't have any money, so this is a good, good idea. So she decides, okay, yeah, I'll come over and I'll watch the kid for a couple hours, right? So she comes over and she picks up Briar. Briar is a three-year-old little girl who's really adorable. Um, so she's like, look, thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, taking Briar. Um, just take her around the corner to the grocery store for a couple hours and come back and I'll let you know, right? So Amira takes Briar to this grocery store called Market Depot. It's, it's kind of like a Whole Foods, it's a high-end grocery store. And Amira and Briar are just walking up and down the aisles killing time. Amira's playing some music on her phone. They're having a good time together. So while they're in the grocery store, this white woman sees them and she's suspicious because there's this young black woman with this little white child and she's like oh maybe she's kidnapping her <laughs> so she goes and speaks to this the security guard in the in the grocery store and so the security guard and this woman approach Amira and they start questioning her and they're like um you know who's this child and like why are you here it's late on a Saturday night and they start you know questioning her so Right away, Amira is like, you know, I'm the babysitter of the child. I'm responsible for the child. Their parents are three blocks away. They're having an emergency at their house. And we're just killing a couple, you know, killing some time before, while they get everything squared away. And we'll be out of here in a second. But as Amira is trying to explain the situation, the security guard and the woman are not listening to her at all. Um, and so Amir is like trying to get them to listen and it's like, look, everything is cool. I'm actually the baby, I'm the nanny of the child and, and, but they're just, they don't want to hear it. Right. So the security guard and the woman start questioning three-year-old Briar. And, <laughs> and so they, they bend down and they're like, 
hey, sweetie, you know, is, who is this? Is this your friend? You know, where's your mom? You know, and they start get questioning her. And I, I want to read this one line from the story verbatim because Kyle, author Kylie Reed just uh, does an amazing job um, writing this scene out because I really felt like I was there. So the woman and the security guard are questioning Briar and Amira is standing there. She says, as it seemed, her entire existence had become annulled. Amira felt like raising her arm as if she were finding a friend in a large crowd with a phone to her ear and saying, do you see me? I'm waving my hand. <laughs> And she goes on to say, it suddenly seemed like her fate was in the hands of a toddler who believed that broccoli are baby trees. <laughs> I just, I, that line right there just was like, you know, it, it really impacted me. The guard and the woman are questioning Briar and Amira and they're just not really hearing what Amira has to say. And things continue to escalate. So eventually Amira's like, look, you know what? I'm gonna call the Briar's father, and so she, he can explain to you what's going on. She calls uh, the father. The father comes to the grocery store. Like I said, they were only three blocks away. So the father comes over, and as soon as the father arrives in the grocery store, the woman and the security guard are like, oh, oh I guess everything's okay, see you later. <laughs> and they kind of scurry away. And Amira, who's by this point completely stressed out, um, she gives Briar back to her dad and just kind of goes home. And so the thing about this story was, as I was listening to it, I could feel the stress of that situation like pulsing through my body because I've experienced a lot of those situations living in the US. And even just, with, just within the summer of last year, just summer of 2019, I had two situations that were very similar. One, I got, one time I got pulled over by a police officer um, and he was questioning me in very much in the same way. And the other time I was stopped at uh, the U.S. Customs border, my friends and I were driving back into the U.S. from Canada and we got pulled over from the customs officers and they were questioning us in the exact same way. And so it was I, when I was listening to this story, I could really relate to it and feel that stress of like, I'm trying to explain something to you, but you just don't want to hear it, right? <laughs> if you want to hear that story, leave a comment below and maybe I can make another video about that story for another time. Uh, or maybe you have your own story of a similar type of experience and if you have that, share that in the comments below too. So I'm listening to this story and I'm feeling the stress of a mirror and just kind of like this rising tension of, you know, I'm trying to just go about my day and now I'm in the situation where people are questioning me and questioning why I'm, I'm in this space. And the juxtaposition of listening to that stressful story while I was sitting on my peaceful balcony here in Medellin, it just kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, oh, this is what that ball of emotion that was in your stomach this is really what it was all about <laughs> because, because I feel like that, that urge to move to Colombia was, was pushing me to move here because when I'm here in Colombia, I really don't have experiences like that. And I don't feel like those experiences are like about to happen at any moment. So I feel like the best way to explain the difference between how I felt living in the U.S. and how I feel living in, here in Medellin is to share the experience of the first time I went to El Tesoro Centro Comercial, which is a really high-end mall here in Medellin. Uh, El Tesoro has a Yamaha musical instrument store, and I was just walking around the mall, checking it out, and when I lived in New York City, I actually owned a Yamaha keyboard, and it was a pretty big keyboard, and I didn't want to go through the hassle of shipping it here to Colombia. So I left it in the U.S., and so I was like, oh, I wonder if they have the same keyboard. I go into the store, and right away I walk in and there's this sales associate. She comes right up to me. She's like, oh, in, in Spanish. She's like, oh, hi, how are you doing? You know, how can I help you? What brings you in today? And so right away I'm like, lo siento, mi español, mi español es muy malo. She's like, oh, tranquilo, no hay problema. I can practice my English with you and I'll help you with your Spanish. And I'm like, oh, okay, right? And so I just said, hey, you know, I had a Yamaha keyboard. But before, uh, I had a Yamaha keyboard in New York before I moved here. To Colombia 
And I was just curious if you had the same one and what the price was. And she was, she, she was like, oh yeah, that sounds great. And she's like, oh, you just moved here to Columbia. And she's like, oh, how wonderful. And uh, she's like, oh, did you move for work? Or are, are you here with your family? And so I, I kind of explained a little bit of my story. And she's like, oh, you know, that's so wonderful. She's like, welcome. And, and you know, I hope you're having a good time here. And she's like, oh, can I, can I get you a glass of water? Are you thirsty? I'm like, no, I'm okay. I, I don't need any water. She's like, oh, you know what? Let me get you some water. <laughs> So she goes and grabs a glass of water and comes back and gives me some water. And then, so she's showing me all the different keyboards. You know, she's like, do you know how to play the piano really well? I'm like, no, I really didn't. I, I really, I just played around a little bit because I find it um, relaxing to just play around on the keyboard. I don't really know how to play it, you know, legitimately. She was like, oh, well, you know, we have lessons here and, you know, we have a classroom and a professor, uh, an instructor uh, can, can give you private lessons. And she's like, let me go get you the schedule. So she runs back and comes back with the uh, schedule for the private lessons. And she's just like, and the whole time I'm thinking like, wow, like it, it's so different how I'm treated here in Colombia versus how I'm treated <laughs> in the United States. It's such a night and day. And specifically in the space of like a high-end like luxury type of store because i feel like in the u.s it's always this kind of like hi how can i help you but it's really fake and very much kind of like hi how can i help you but like buy something or get out kind of like energy that that i feel when i go out and here she was just like oh you know welcome and just uh give me a glass of water and and it wasn't like this fake you know you know act of just uh, just trying to be like overly nice but it was genuine like she was curious about why I was here in Colombia and you know we had a real conversation and so it, it when I was listening to the story at such a fun age the contrast between the U.S. and, and Colombia was just like laid bare and I was like wow that's that's what that emotion that's what that gut feeling was all about it was urging me to move here because here I feel so much more at ease and so much more relaxed living in Colombia. So I, I shared the story about my experience shopping here in Colombia because it is one small antidote, but I feel like it's representative of how, generally how I feel living here in Colombia. Colombia has a culture of community and togetherness and there is a certain amount of just respect and dignity that people treat you with here in Colombia that I really don't feel in the United States. Um, and the reason I share those stories is because it's 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 kind of difficult to pinpoint exactly what it is, or, or but it's definitely a strong sense, a strong feeling that you get that when you're here in Colombia, you. Or just treat it with more dignity and respect. Now, to be clear, what I'm not saying is Colombia is not a perfect panacea, uh, paradise. Uh, you know, everyone doesn't hold hands in the street and sing Kumbaya every day. Colombia has problems. Colombia has racism. Colombia has violence. Colombia has corruption. Colombia has a whole host of problems that, um, you know, are unique to this country. But so does every other country. Every country has things that are great about it and every country has things that are bad. But the thing about Colombia is I feel like, yes, Colombia faces a lot of challenges, but it faces those challenges with a sense of togetherness, a sense of community, a sense of love and respect that I just really did not feel when I was living in the U.S. It's just different, a different feeling living there. I choose to live here in Colombia because even with those challenges, I still love it. <laughs> I still love being here. And really what it comes down to is there's a, a spirit of joy. There's a spirit of love. There's a spirit of togetherness. And there's a spirit of grace that I feel permeates the culture here in Colombia. And you feel it. You feel it when you arrive. You feel it when you live here. You feel it when you interact with people. And it's an incredible, incredible place to 
to live and to go out and to, to experience every day. So it's this spirit of togetherness and love and grace that is what keeps me here and what I love about living in Colombia. And ultimately, I feel like that is the real reason I decided to move here.